Uh, this meeting is being live streamed. With, uh, got it. Bien. Quiere decir que no hay que cambiar nada. ¿Por qué no nos vamos presentando? Why don't we um, Why don't we introduce ourselves to Angela before the, the, the we start? Well, I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to do it. So there you go. Quiero bajar. I want to lower the volume of the YouTube thing. I don't know how to. Alguien, <laughs> alguien sabe cómo bajar el costo de YouTube. Um, bueno, no importa. Do you hear me? Do we hear each other? I, I hear you. I can hear you. Good. I'm outside on my balcony, so because um, everybody is asleep. <laughs> hey, who's everybody? Uh, well, how many, how many do you have at home now? I have uh, um, my nephew here, the and, uh, his family, and my husband, and so. But I'm awake and look forward to meet everybody. Yeah, yeah. It's like fashion. Art is like fashion. It takes like all times and all efforts. Um, <laughs> let's introduce ourselves. Who starts? Let's start by the, the farthest one, Santiago Torres. We're talking about time, Japan. Really? Yeah. Yes. Nice. Hi. Good morning. Um, I'm Santiago. I live in Tokyo. Yeah. Uh, and what do you do? What, what do you do? I'm a lighting designer. Light. He works with light. Um, Elizabeth Verdugo. Hello. I'm Elizabeth Verdugo. I was living in Argentina, and I am visual artist. We are in Argentina and what kind of visual artists are you? Ah, I, I am living in Patagonia. In oh really? The mountain, yes. Fantastic. No, they're very interesting. And what kind of art do you do, Elizabeth? Sorry? What, what, what kind of art do you do? How would you define it? Uh, I made installation mm -hmm. and Political and social installation. Yeah, she's an activist. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of problems for to work. Here we're perfect. Um, Gabriela Sucorino French. Gabriela Sucorino French. Uh, she's in Paraguay. Hello, hello everyone. Hello, Angela. Yes, hello. I'm I live here. Uh, and I am in between photography, but I I enjoy much more working in theater, in the visual and sound aspects and light of theater. And I also do some research in regards to anthropology, cultural anthropology, and discourses about Paraguay. So that's. It's it's in between the two things. Between He's doing an amazing project. Sciences. An amazing project. A, an amazing book now on on who was the name of the ethnographer? Her name is Branislava Susnik. She is a Slovenian anthropologist who lived here and worked since nice 19... to meet you. Hello, 1951 to 1996. And she has a huge corpus of work that I'm now trying to. She's, she's, her. She unearthed, she unearthes like unearthes. these, these yes. women that were completely like I mean un, unseen no? in, in Paraguay and she brings them back to their material necessity. And she's probably the first women photographer in Paraguay. Marta Rivero. Hi everybody. Hi Angela. Hello. Uh, well, I'm, I live in Argentina, in Cordoba, in the middle of the country. Um, what, what is Cordoba? Tell, tell her a little bit what, what is Cordoba. Cordoba is very central in the middle of Argentina. Uh, it's the second uh, province or state uh, and the, the second biggest city besides our, uh, Buenos Aires. 
Mm -hmm. And I am, I also, as Gabriela, do different things. I am a visual artist. I also write. I am an architect. And I, I don't think I teach, but I just think about art with other people. In, in you do too. So, yeah. yeah. You have okay. like a community. Yeah. 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 They're very interesting. And, uh, and Alexis. <laughs> and I need you to tell her what, what, what you do. Hi, everybody. Well, I'm from Rosario, the third largest city in Argentina. Um, I'm an actor and I write and direct theater plays. And I'm also working with Rodrigo on some kind of project. I'm trying to <laughs> develop and find a form to express it in some way. Which would you like? Would you like to explore a little bit like, to develop a little bit the, your story? Yes, it, it's related with a with an experience I got from some years ago with a guy that I met on the street who was on, in jail for three years, and he also lived with me. And now he's kind of your son, I, a very very close friend to me. Um, and well, it's the, 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 the thing that I'm trying to, <laughs> to explore is how to express or to, to give a form to that in, in terms of this new way of relation or kinship that it's developing. <laughs> queer kinship. Um, oh, I think it goes beyond queer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Not my turn, queer? is it, Rodrigo? What is the young? No, 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 no. Uh, what, is, what is the young queer? How would you define it? No, I, I really, um, I appreciate. Um, oh, sorry, what's your name again? Like Carrington. Alexis. Alexis Carrington. Alexis. Um, <laughs> I appreciate Alexis' um, word kinship. Um, I think. Uh, uh, the, with all the information and strange nearnesses and distance, when you suddenly meet somebody who aligns with all sorts of things that come out of the news that is usually abstract, and then suddenly you have somebody in front of you who carries this real information in a real form, it goes suddenly, you're overwhelmed what to do with the response to that. I have a similar experience right now with... Um, a guy who is um, editing some video material for me and he's in Kiev and um, you know all the stuff you read and also the new stuff but then suddenly when I talk to him I get to not, it's another wavelength and you don't know what to do and you're looking for this kinship because the, all of this information is making an alienation because it's information but you don't get through and I, I, I think it's a very nice you use the word kinship um, uh, I, I think there's a, a great disorientation and a great sort of searching in the dark for kinship, some kinship that is making us do many different kinds of things. The mixture between alienation and the, and the need for kinship in an uncertain time in our world at the moment. I, 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 we have two more, two more, I think, because I see only, yeah. It's Susana Marenko, please. Uh, press the press the button in in the mic. Hello, Angela. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I am basically a painter from the start, but uh, I've tried many other media as well. In fact, I am working on etching today, and uh, I've never been in installations, and I find it very very appalling. But um, that needs a greater space, a greater working space. And maybe there are difficulties for us in Argentina to get everything in order according to economical problems, general economical problems. But um, I feel this is a point in, in art where the traditional media is not that worth enough. So that's my point today. 
Yeah. Um, can I have a question? Do you think that installation needs a lot of space? Uh, to develop, I do. Can well, in I... fact, I, I, I paint very big pictures. So maybe this is my idea, sort of monumental, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's like installation starts, the origins had a lot to do with space. It, it starts with minimalism, and minimalism was very much linked to um, real estate, the real estate development, the Lower East Side, and, and, and so mm -hmm. on. So the lofts. And uh, so we have two people. Um, we, I just pray that Susanna Muxi is uh, listening to us. Um, Susanna Muxi. Sí, hola. ¿Qué tal? <laughs> ¿Qué tal? Susanna, uh, who are you? I don't speak What it is? English, but I understand all. Okay, Hello, yo te traduzco, yo te traduzco. De, 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 decime quién sos y qué, qué haces. Ah, ok. Eh, bueno, yo soy eh, Susana Muxi, hace un montón que estoy en las, con las clases de Rodri. Estás eh, aprendiendo. <risa> eh, y a su vez, eh, bueno, estoy por recibirme en una carrera de acá eh, que se llama la Universidad Nacional de las Artes. She's que graduating que from uni, los from artistas like the, se the forman. The Academy. Eh, <risa> Y bueno, eh, me recibo a fin de año de licenciada en artes visuales con orientación a la pintura. Es la um, Graduating in the University of Arts in Argentina is equivalent of like, for example, Chelsea. Um, it, 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 but it's much more complicated. How many, cuántas, cuántas materias tuviste que cursar? Eh, solo ochenta y pico. Yo estaba haciendo escenografía y me cambié a la orientación de pintura hace tres años y yeah. tenía 60 materias, o sea, me la pasé estudiando y haciendo todo tipo de experimentación en todo tipo de eh, digital, eh, eh, cerámica, escultura, pintura, dibujo, como que tengo mucha práctica de todo, pero no me considero un artista, pero eso es algo más psicológico. Ahora estoy con pintura y todo. estoy haciendo proyectuales de pintura eh, con una cátedra que, que está muy buena y, y nada, y eso. Pero no saying that she, she had to do 80 courses, more than 80 courses, um, a lot of theory and a lot of practice too. And she, I mean, she does not consider herself an artist. I yeah, would okay. say she is probably an artist the moment she says that. Um, and she studied probably more than anyone. In, in, in this, well, this is six, like from that time. And um, so, I mean, uh, come on, Susie Moxi, we have to talk about that. Uh, Love House. Okay. Hello. Ah, Hello. ¿Cómo, era? ¿Cómo es el nombre? <laughs> ya la conocía. Es amiga tuya hace un montón, ella. ¿Quién? Love House. De hace un montón. No, es, toda la vida. Esta, esta señora. <laughs> ah, Angela. Angela, Angela, Angela you're, you're my friend since when? 2013, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2013, like the blog, started at the same time. Yeah. Um, hi, Angela, my name is Flora. I uh, uh, predominantly work in film, cinema. I just do feature films. And I paint as well. And where are you based? High level. Um, I, I, um, I split my time in between Argentina and London. Okay. So, yeah. And Very I practical. Yeah, and I split my time in between Buenos Aires and London, a little bit, sometimes a little bit of the States as well, depending on what I'm doing film-wise. I might, I don't know, sometimes might be in New York based or LA. And um, yeah, and I split my time in between art and film. Okay. What kind of film are you in? Uh, I do independent films. Um, okay. I do independent films, don't do anything. Uh, they're, they're fairly... Um, they, Nominated to an Oscar. They, um, they do well, they do well, but they're more arty. They're not, they, I don't do big films. I don't like big commercial films, but, but, but you know, uh, with that, that have a little bit of content and, you know, You're, you're Argentinian? Yes, I am. Yeah. Fully, 100% Argentinian. She's, a, she's one of the blonde ones. I'm more like than the other side. 
<laughs> <laughs> so now we can we can focus on the diva herself. That is my friend Angela Lee. You don't look, you don't like the word diva. It's a little uh, weighty. I think you are, but uh, let's <laughs> let's uh, get into your practice. What is that you do? Um, well, I started out um, as a painter, and I am in probably in foreground. I am painting is like if I think of um, the bow of a boat um, going through the water. Um, the frontmost point probably is my paintbrush, but um, uh, it's trailing a lot of other things with it um, in its wake. I would say. Um, But uh, painting is is where I uh, ask the most steep questions, I'd say. But in order to ask those, I'm also interested. I'm working in other fields as well. I guess you've got those questions coming at me, uh, Rodrigo, uh, later on in our conversation. Should we see the, the video to set should the tone? Should, should we watch at the video to set the tone? Which one? The, the, the last the one new- that you The one that you gave me. One I sent you on the WhatsApp. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, if you want to show that, that sets the tone. No. If, okay. Are you are you seeing what I'm seeing now? Or yes. Are me. you seeing Angela's work? No. Or okay, hold on. I need to share because it went directly into into my. Okay. Let me share screen. Uh, share screen, share, share screen, share screen, start broadcast, and, and, uh, uh, hmm. it? now you can see, right? Yes. Barbara, I think you know, Sweden. We have a lot of things on the screen, so maybe, but it's okay. You have a lot of things on the screen? Yeah. Okay, what do you have? We may change that. Don't worry. Okay. Give an idea. Uh, is there, if, I the, if I do this, if I do this, huh? nothing changed. No, right? yeah, there it is. Full screen. Okay, cool. There you go. This is supposed to have. Ah. Right. Um, y ellos también vieron el. Eh, ¿Te decir bien? Es el video de el palazzo. ¿Cómo? ¿Cuál fue su nombre? 
So this is, I can maybe explain you a little bit. This is um, a little um, uh, teaser from my newest project. Um, and I think it's actually nice that we start there. Um, so uh, why the, you know, Rodrigo, you, th you threw a few questions at me about, you know, uh, I've been working with a choreographer. He is um, 27 years old, so he could, he's younger than my youngest son. And um, so we were working in this um, transdisciplinary way with um, a com composer, a com choreographer, and a painter. And um, so I really am I'm going back again to, I think it's Alexis, Alessandro, um, comment on kinship. I think um, I was driven to, um, you know, so the question, my big first question is, how do we get through to anybody that it makes a difference in a flood of information? And there's so much stuff that is just not reaching one. So um, I think this is a deep urgency. Uh, how do you, how do we get through? He, Rodrigo also um, fired the question at me, what is art? Um, and what is an artist? Uh, it's just shortly put, I'd say, you know, um, uh, the artist has an urgency to to express, to connect, um, to be in touch with life in the places that we cannot always explain. Um, what is art? Uh, maybe something that can get in these cracks and connect us. And I like this word kinship again. Thanks for that, um, Alexandra. Um, it just hit the right spot, I think, of what I'd like to share this evening. Um, that is um, making on one side as artists, you know, digging around in all different directions in what sort of media. On the other side, we're living in a time that is trying to brand us as artists, that you have an identity of what you do. Um, which is so we have a big contradiction going on there. So in this collaboration, what I wanted to find out are what are the common denominators, whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's dancing or choreography or music or film or whatever, what is it? Are there things that actually connect? You know, what would be the common denominators? And um, so what it boiled down to in this particular work was um, precision. Um, so precision, presence, and um, in the end, shown through composition, um, certain considerations that connected us all, whether it was a musician or a, in a painting, um, what makes it, what does a mark, what, what does every mark do and what difference does it make if you make a mark or you move your foot or you move your paintbrush or you say a word, what difference does it make? And I found it uh, fantastic working with different age group, different uh, disciplines, how to touch these subjects, how do we get through to each other? And um, this project was uh, driven out of a, an urgency, um, being slightly overwhelmed with uh, so much information and not knowing how to get through, especially right now in this middle of this war and uh, um, there's so much uncertainty. Uh, Angela, um, I, what, what happens if I, if I tell you this? If I tell you that I could read what I just saw as a high as a as a high bro, um, um, high bro, uh, chauvinistic, uh, patriarchal representation of uh, a brutal nationality like the Swiss. Uh, if, what happens if I, if I read? Because I mean, we need to be more precise. Um, I like the, the 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 notion of precision because I see that. I didn't know what, what, what was happening there. What I saw, the, the, first of all, in this context, what you're doing is something high, bro. Is you're bringing back high art at the time. Well, for me, of Rodrigo, I think when you, I would say that um, there's a, there are political political urgencies. <laughs> 
um, that are driving you want to do stuff. But still, I still feel that, you know, the, the actual artifact that you're creating has to have a language. And that interests me. Uh, if there is a language in what it is you're making in that sense, when if you call it highbrow, I so what does it mean highbrow? For me, the precision means also hard work, dedication. It means commitment. No, no, of. but that, hold on, but that, that's what it means. But you you are representing it as ballet, as painting, as painting on the wall, big painting on the wall that is museum painting, and you're representing it through a series of symbols of. Um, high art and then it can if you can feel whatever you want but I mean the symbols are very strong there so yeah I think statement. so yeah but I think at the moment I think you have depending on how you look at things it's always the context and the time and the framing in which you see something so right now in a time where already made no, you know, people don't have time. The, co the level of commitments are fragile. Till you can stand on your toes is fucking hard work. You know, just managing the paint in a delicate way takes time. It takes, you know, I, I don't correct in my painting. So I forced myself into a kind of commitment to the canvas, all these um, kind of struggles that in the end, I think I want to show that, that about giving some, giving your time. I think that's what it is. So it takes time till but, you can do the, what these ballet dancers do, and it's a lot of time. I want to go back to Swiss, Switzerland because I like the precision thing because it's clear. I mean, it, it, the, the the notion of Switzerland is something that I always associate. Well, maybe with you the should. Work. And I mean, the Chinese look at the, the the Chinese history of craftsmanship. There's a very big weight there as well. Yeah, but I want to go back to Switzerland. That's where you live. Uh, <laughs> And where you sh is this is your your community. So the the uh, Switzerland, it's a very cruel nation in terms of like it's built upon uh, money from narcos, man money from uh, money laundering. I mean, until a certain point, I think it was the, the the 2010, I think, or 2015, something like that. Um, so it's it's it's. The, the, my problem with this aesthetic, <laughs> this high aesthetic thing from Switzerland is that that's what Switzerland represents. Switzerland represents this place of peace and beauty and and spas and that that actually is hiding this brutality and this um, order. So if I if I can I. Could I translate Let me tell that you a story, story Rodrigo. I want to tell you a, a story that has really. Um, um, affected me in a lot recently. So this film that I, not this particular clip, but another one that's connected to this project has been edited by this guy in Kiev. And on the day of my opening of this show in New York, he sent me a very uh, a message and he said, I'm thinking, because he was working for about six months inside the, the text of this project and uh, on, on the editing and this and that. He was in various, I've never met him. I, I've never seen him and I even have not met him in Zoom. I only heard from him on the day of my opening um, via um, Instagram message that he said to me, it's been a very important time for him to be inside this story. And he wrote, um, I'm thinking about you on your day of your opening and I would like to thank you for being true. He said to me, so here you have a guy. So my idea is, Rodrigo, that when people are in pain, if you, 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 people are all people when we are struggling, if you, you want to get close inside them, you go in with a sledgehammer, you will not get close. You will well, not. I, I want to take issue with that because I mean, you claimed that you compared yourself to Alexis in, in, in the kinship thing, but actually there's a difference there. Because Alexis took that guy home. And another thing is to feel, I mean, the, to feel from far away the, the vibes of the, of the situation. So it's different. I and, see and, that my... and, and then the concept of kinship, for example, I would say as a homosexual, you have children. I mean, those are your kin. I mean, it's, you, you come from a biological kin. I mean, us, we, ne we need as a, as a, as a, as a tool of survival to to grab queer kinship it's not just 
a, a, a term. It's, like, it's basically what you have because either your family kicks you out or, or you know, like, or, or disease spreads and, uh, and you're ostracized. So, so this, I'm, I'm saying this because I'm, I think that your work is more conceptual than actually um, modernist. I think it's a, you are going more and more into the conceptual area. And, um, and I wonder whether if, if, you, if you consider this reading of like the smoke curtain, it's like a, it's, it's something that says that everything is high and perfect. I think you're missing out one big factor, Rodrigo. Mm -hmm. I'm half Chinese and I've grown up in this kind of um, um, very strong um, old Chinese tradition that um, in order to, uh, <laughs> you know, in order to point to something, you point to the empty space. So you don't poke, you don't focus right into the middle. You, you, you look at the empty space or you look at the other side so i my personal feeling is that um like if i if i have a delicate space as a human being that is is fragile if i'm going to let anybody near me if they come they have to come gently i i think that um, that's why I, I don't consider myself a political artist in that sense. Although I have some, I have some, I have very a lot of thought behind what I do. But I think that, uh, especially right now, with so much polarity, so much politics, in the end, how do you just get through on a human level? How do you reach people? I think it's but a just, business. So that's why my work saying. has this. So what is you know the use of aesthetics or the something that is the first door that you can stare to look at something and then slowly it opens up to darker things. Um, this piece actually is just a small teaser from a, um, a larger piece that has some <laughs> other parts that are um, more tricky to, to engage with. Uh, one last thing, and I open the, the, the floor, I, it's the, there's something that you do with China that, that, that is tricky. Because it's quite, you, when you refer to China, you refer to this primitivist, like destillate notion of China. China is, is this. Uh, okay. No, but I'm, I, my father, I grew the China I grew up with doesn't exist anymore. So this was just how I grew up. You know, but this is very, the part of my building China. blocks. Yeah, that's why it's a China. It's a very, it's a garden in China. I'm doing a performance at the moment like with Switzerland. Women who is from um, from mainland China and where we're exchanging on two Chinas that are completely different. Um, yeah. Let's open the floor and uh, and you, you saw other things too, so you can you can bring them into the, the discussion. I'm going to, let's, let's, let's start with uh, Gabriela Zuccolino and uh, then Alexis. <laughs> And then Santiago from Japan. Um, I, I, I find myself incapable of to speak about Angela's work because I feel that much of Angela's uh, energy goes through her yes. individually. Yeah. And yeah. she lives in a world that is so different from what I live and from my country. Well. I find something extremely clean almost celestial and in this moment in my life and through this anthropologist who tried in 1950 and 60 to look at the Indians today and not what they're supposed to be ideally but they were prostitutes they were workers in in farms and how do you still call them Indians when they basically seem to be peasants of the lowest class, but they do, they do have another vision of the world. How do we, how are we able to consider them humans, which up till today in Paraguay, many times Indians are not even considered humans. Just two weeks ago, 10 were walking and police stopped them and said they couldn't walk because they were Indians. So they were sent in this small hole till 7 a.m. because they're dangerous. Mm -hmm. So, I find, I'm sorry, I, I look at her work with some envy in a way because I wish we could be able 
I wish we could be able to put somewhere something so beautiful. But what we have around is so contradictory and so difficult to put name that everything is very dirty here. Everything is, is very confusing. And so what I'm trying now is to, how can I talk about this context? But Gabriela, couldn't you, you, couldn't you use her work as a refuge? As a, as a utopos, as a, as a utopia, as a place to me, to it's, utopia, it's utopias. I, I have to say that I studied one year in Switzerland and I didn't know, Angela, you live in Switzerland. But when Rodrigo said Switzerland, I was like, yes, that's what I remember when I was 18 and lived in Switzerland. It seems so, so utopian for me. So, I, but I understand it's, it's my situation, my context, and that shapes how we see things, right? So I, I, what, I, what I see is um, in a way envy in the sense that I, it seems to me that you, Angela, are able to really express yourself and find what you feel. And sometimes in, this, in these countries, you don't really have much time to process that much because things just clash all the time. And so you're in a constant contradiction. You don't even know where you're standing. So when I Standing. When I first um, took, I, I have a studio that looks on into these um, these old, very old trees. And when I, mean, I first moved in there, I felt extremely stressed and guilty that I look into this place. And I thought, I think I'm going to get cancer or get a, a car accident or, you know, something because it's not allowed to be well in that sense. And you met me. Huh? And you met me <laughs> somewhere. So in part of Switzerland is, where in Switzerland is this? I'm. In I live in Lugano on the Italian border. Oh, okay. Okay. And um, I, uh, I, I had a big struggle to accept, and and I, somehow in the process of looking at these beautiful trees, I got a thinking of looking at concrete or looking at so it's this side this duality i'm grow up also with a lot of duality so in i'm half chinese and half british and i grown up with a with um, duality is like a major like carriageway down through my whole life this mixture i'm a full i'm painting all my life uh since i'm 11 and i have three kids as well so i'm really everything in double portion double lines um so I, I feel that the and this this conversation with this young man in Kiev, um, it's uh, it, it's interesting because I feel somewhere we really want to to share something together, and we're trying to we're trying to get through. It's like being in two bubbles, and his bubble is just as bubbly as mine, you know. And and I think you yeah. when it's it's a different bubble, and that don't. Yeah take that on a surface level but i think you know this the the dichotomy of how we're living because in today you cannot just live in your own place i mean if you're halfway sensitive you cannot just live in your own say oh well it's too bad for the others i'm sitting here it's just it's difficult i think we all don't know um that's why i i keep repeating now from the fourth time alex's word of kinship i think somewhere this is a it, it's in us to desire kinship in human beings, actually, at the baseline, when things get really so, we met Rodrigo, based on the idea, you know, when shit hits the fan, what, how are we going to respond to each other, you know? And of course, there's no one answer to that, but somewhere, um, it's I, I find that, and I'm not saying I'm right or anything, and it's not that I'm making a pathos out of my my approach, but I find that. Um, an image that is um, done with a lot of commitment or where the precision is well. So how do you show commitment? So the precision becomes a measure of this involvement with an image that somewhere it gets something trustworthy. And this becomes maybe the beginning of, of a place to share with somebody who is also really in a shitty place. 
And, and then in that state of commitment and precision, the, the shitty state this other person in becomes also part of you. So it becomes a communicative space. That is somewhere Angela, where I'm trying Angela, to go. I want to, to bring more materiality to your to what she said about you, which I totally agree. Tell us the story of your exhibition in London, because the, the, now I talked about what I despise about Angela's work. Now I'm going to talk about what I think makes her work special. Um, <laughs> take the microphone off, without coughing. Muxi. Um, so, um, <laughs> yeah, put it off, off. Um, so, uh, tell, us, tell them that story, because I mean, she is the kind of artist that I want you to listen to this, as a, because I used her experience many times in coaching. With artists. She well, I'll, I'll just tell you, vibe. I tell you one thing, as delicate as my painting looks, I'm an animal. So when I get an idea, um, all my projects are artist projects, mostly also the project in New York, although I had a gallery kind of let me in the doorway, but the whole thing with the choreography and all this stuff and involvement has some, um, um, is I'm then working the story, outside of the, story, the materiality of the story. So the, the, in the England, place. you went to with your husband and the, and the, and the yeah, track. so I, I, um, I took, I found a space in London and, um, um, because the kind of work that I want to do, I don't find that kind of possibility really in, in the way I want it in the gallery space. And so I found a place in Shoreditch, which was fantastic. It had a huge rolling, like a garage door that opened to the street. And um, we drove to England with the whole exhibition. I set they it up from Switzerland. 24 hours <laughs> with a dinner for 40 people afterwards. I fundraised and um, we had this filter to the street. There was no window or door to the street. So people would walk past. And I sat in there with my uh, paintings, like in a vegetable shop. And every person came by with push chairs, with scooters. I had a cat bring a dead fish in. Some pigeons came in. And I said for two weeks. The most beautiful thing was that um, a lot of young people came in, uh, kids, like between 18 and 25. And the first thing they asked was, who did that? And I said, I did it. And this was just the beginning of... Um, a connection or a kinship, I'd say, that they said, wow. And, um, and the fact that I, that I did the work and sat there with it um, uh, had, an, had an impact. And I'd say that that's how, I mean, I'm still doing that. Uh, and then the project I just did in Milan now in 25 rooms of a Baroque Palazzo was also my idea. And um, so I, I think it's a, a commitment. Uh, so if, if my work is very beautiful and all of this aesthetic, I'm, I, about that I work, work like a beast work. behind tell it. <laughs> tell us about that work. Uh, uh, hold on. First, before you tell us, go, let's go with Alexis um, and you tell us and then we carry on. Alexis. No, um, when I saw the video today, I remember the other day I saw one of your videos, Rodrigo, of Joan Miró. <laughs> I don't know, but I connected. <laughs> I related what you said about Joan Miró and the use of blank space. Yeah. And she said about when you ask her about um, her paintings and, and her work, what she said about uh, China and the um, traditions and the use of silence, you know, that you <laughs> use about silence or you work on silence. And I was wondering whether you have kind of no, kind of nostalgia for that traditional China that maybe was like stable and now is totally different and changing completely because I don't I don't think it's nostalgia from them because I didn't even grow up there I mean this is a kind of a place a sense of home belonging that I grew up with from my father was homesick but I think it's more um you know I I grew up in an unstable cultural identity so all mixed up And I think essentially I've been driven to try to understand what connects us people. And I'm just trying to figure out how to connect. So, so, the, so the performance that you do when you, you are dressed, I mean, one of my banners was with you doing the China, 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 China. I mean, how does it compatibilize with what you just said? 
because I mean it's you it's a theatrics it's a theater of China what you do um so well if you're asking about my coat I mean that's a very surface surface of view of the coat so the coat is made of all my painting rags so these painting rags I clean my brushes on them and then so I think I'm looking for all kinds of information that is getting through so this for example I feel like Half the stuff we have on our bodies is no, it doesn't connect. So these these painting rags have become something they're like, I don't know, I, I associate them. Maybe they were like, I don't know. It's like your own body smell. It, it's something when you smell your own clothes that have your body smell. This is something that is in our world of sort of dis, detachment. These body smells become something very specific. So my painting rags, have become increasingly this kind of a, almost a fetish thing that I, I feel very comfortable with. So I've started to, I then I make clothes with them, I made the coat, and now I make I made a sail on my boat. The boat in the new project is all made of painting rags. And um, I think it's um, a desperate attempt to connect to, in a way that there is, in places there's, there's connections are, are, fragment in a fragmented relation to anything to materials um, and that's a part of our consumption now that there's no time to develop a relationship with something um, over time so that code is made of basically okay if Chinese Chinese thing is probably the the least interesting thing about that code the interesting thing is but it looks China Chinese yeah, but it's just a code. It's a code. It's a, I go, it has a little bit of a uh, some reference. But this is secret. Reference. That's the secret thing that you have. But the, the viewer sees that. So this is this because one of the one of the well, you the see that video, But if you look closely, it's full of painting marks, and I think these. But are the shape particular. is of a kimono. Um, not a classical kimono. No. Okay, well, not a classical kimono. As an Asian kimono. reference, it's a second sure. grade kimono. Yes. Yeah. It's not a it's not a shirt and baggy trousers. Exactly, exactly. Thank you. So I mean that for sure. And the, I, the, well, the, regarding this, because one of the things that concerned me a little bit, and I always have in mind this thing of you being the performative diva. I would, uh, to me, you are the work of art. I mean, it's it's your lived life your lived life as a Chinese in Switzerland, achieving the things that you're achieving. To me, that's the world of art. So that's one. But, and then the rest is kind of like props that allow you to do that. But um, going back to the props or to the, or to the works of art or the official works of art, there's something very risky in turning all this into a, the crazy Chinese woman playing yellow mask to the whites, to the rich whites in Switzerland. Don't you, haven't you thought about that? My collectors are not uh, number one. Are they? You're being very categorical, Rodrigo. I think our conversation should go more into... No, no, the conversation goes where it goes. Um, the conversation goes where it goes. And um, it's, how do you, do you, because you're, you get into, into performance. So this is the language of performance. I mean, this is a long problem. So, how is political? It's social. You're you're getting into a, into a boat. Look at what happened in Greece in Kalamata three days ago. It's a very dangerous place being a privileged woman. So it's 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 a very tricky place. So um, how do you how do you navigate that? Because it's a you you set a mind field. Um, first ballet the high art then so how how does it work for you how do you get to that synapsis of okay this is what this means to me and this is what i need to convey how how, how is your creative process okay so i mean i think the what's interesting about what you're saying is um, that you have saw sort of a performance aspect in my work so for me painting in itself is also a performance like the, oh, the, the yeah. moment to mark a canvas is a kind of performance. I remember when Andrew Renton from Marlborough Gallery, he said to me, your painting is a performance. Like you feel that there's somebody there making these marks and you feel the performative aspect in the paints. Um, He's an uh, excellent painter, an excellent painter. 
Um, I so what I'm interested in if this movement on a canvas is a performance, then what difference is if I make a performance? You know, where does that align in other in other moments in a, in a piece of text or in a piece of movement or in a gesture? Um, so I think I'm using painting as a language. And so in the end, the performance becomes a kind of language as well. I have had a, dreams of performances maybe 20 years ago. And I remember one of the things I made in 1994 was a one meter bronze sewing needle. I was very involved with the idea of mending. And um, um, this, I mean, a lot of the subject matter in my work has been connected to daily life as a, as a woman, as a mother, and um, a deep anxiety for the future for my kids that just comes out of having kids. And um, starting with like Forrest dying when my daughter, who's now 40 three when she was like around eight so started the first acid rain situations and and I made this um mending this needle with the idea of mending and um I realized that some of the things that I'm trying to say in painting I can also go up to somebody and say something and I I did one performance in Milan with one of my in a part of the building that was for the women's wing and I took my needle and um, I didn't plan anything. It just was very impromptu. And I'm, you know, I'm too old to worry about failings, which is a great, great side of being old. And so I just, um, I asked somebody, why can't we not mend anything anymore? And then I was just really into this needle. And I realized um, I've really something to do with this needle. I want to talk about mending. <laughs> I remember that my mother, she used to mend her stockings and, um, and people don't know how to sew on buttons anymore. And it just kind of made up stuff. It was a very impromptu performance, but I felt it was close to the way I paint. And so, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's how that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the I other thing I've discovered um, that, that was just by chance, I had a little job that was sometimes I had to go read something um, a piece of text and the the guy the re re recording studio said I'm I'm quite good with my voice and if they could use me for advertising English where they need somebody speaking English and I said sure. <laughs> you know it helps me pay my stuff and so um, and I quite learned actually I quite started to like to use my voice is another kind of paintbrush so I slipped into this performing thing a bit but I mean, it's not like I don't have any illusions there. Um, you know, painting is still for me the big uh, filter of stuff. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there in the art world. And I feel when I'm in pain, you, okay, you say highbrow. Okay, I push myself painting into uncomfortable places. I mean, I'm painting all my life. Like Michelangelo. I've, traversed, I've yeah. traversed a lot of territory painting. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because you come from the decade, from the uh, the time where painting, uh, neo-expressionist painting was, no? You're, you're that generation. Yes. How did, you, how did you experience that it changed from conceptualism to painting and now back to conceptualism? My early painting was full of frustration because I had no idea how to paint. And I was thrashing around and not getting to where I wanted to get. And so the painting process was a series of um, uh, uh, layers of failures in where I did I was thrashing it all out on the canvas. Now, those were 25 years of practice. Uh, I do that in my mind now. How did you learn? How did I learn by thrashing out on the canvas for 25 years until I in which had so many so many brush strokes in my hand that today I just vision what I want to put down and I don't need to put down the 300 brush strokes. I, I think in my mind which one it is and I wait for it. It's like fishing. Who and then I know you? that's it. Boom. Who taught you? Who's your who's your master? Who's your your who's whose institution? Do you have a, a a master? Do you have a, an institution? I have these people like yourself, Mr. Kanyete, that bug me. And then I I, I bug no, your victims. You have your victims. <laughs> <laughs> I have you have your victims. 
I have I have people that who I who I let under my skin who bug me, and then I think about what they're bugging me about, and then I then I think about it and I see what happens. But we never talk like this. I mean, I always say yes to you. I mean, so how 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 does this feel in relation to the typical? Um, uh, for example, I saw a video of this like. Um, I don't know how to call it. It's um, it's frozen, um, Germanic, Germanica, um, uh, Fräulein in in a, in as as the Galerien, and uh, and the, she's not that, German. She's um, Austrian. She's actually Ukrainian Russian. Right, right. So she's she's I mean, well, she was performing German. She was performing German. So how? Did, how do you navigate that? I mean, what's the difference between that and this, for example? Oh, I go everywhere, Rodrigo, and I'm interested all over the place. You yeah, know, but I want a more Brazilian precise or Argentinian answer. or German. But I want a more precise answer. I would, I would, I, my I would problem, see. Rodrigo, is I don't see boundaries. I'm really, I have an issue. I just don't see the boundaries. I think you do see boundaries. <laughs> I, th I do see, I, you see boundaries. The boundary is discomfort. The boundary is power, poverty. The boundary is uh, dirt. The boundary uh, is like what that's what is not in Switzerland. I think you do see boundaries. Um. So what, what what do you think? Is there, what, how do you relate to criticism to to art criticism? But this is my question. Was that basically? So how like, someone that comes from no, from 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 is you're not uh, like like twenty something. So you 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 saw the old criticism, you know, like the old art critics. Then you saw the, the death of criticism taken over by neoliberalism, and then you saw me, which is something too. And then from the origins of my project, and then you saw uh, you are now circulating also in the in the international art market. So it's. Criticism. Uh, I'm talking about art critics, obviously. How do you do you? What do you think of them? Us? Uh, are, are we important? Is what I'm telling you relevant to you? It's productive. Do you appreciate? Do you loathe it? Do you? How do you take? It? That's a good question. I'd say in the end. Um... You know, I'm interested in seeing things and then I follow that and then I want to realize that. Now, am I interested in your response uh, or the response of the art critics? Um, to some degree, it depends who, but basically I think the artists, uh, you know, the, the dialogue is a lot with yourself, uh, with a few people. I mean, there's a few people that you'll have an exchange with, but I think as an artist, you you know, you have to risk to just walk out on a line. And uh, if you fuck up, then you fuck up. And that's, then you have to deal with that too. But I think you have to go places where you don't know and nobody can really help you to go there. You have to really give your, give, give what you can and crawl there and figure out how you're going to handle that. Mm -hmm. um you know i mean i think it's interesting to talk we've had big conversations if i if i think what did you give me rodrigo um you pushed me to be more ambitious mm -hmm. definitely um which is interesting um you know you pushed me to be more aggressive about uh success actually paradoxically talent. yes i mean i don't i think that i was more timid about my work than than when i met yeah. you you told me to do a catwalk piece and come to London. And I did a nine meter cedar painting and it was an important piece. Amazing. And I think, Amazing. Um, um, I'm telling you, I'm telling people it's, it's a, how long, how, how big was it? 27 feet by. 27 feet. feet. And see, that's this thing that you can, you, you can see in Michelangelo and in Constable. It's this, the, 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 they were like this delicate. It's, you know, she, she, she works with this white background and you have these feathers. And this was so economic and so, the, 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 it's almost like, it, again, the ballet. It's, it was like so the you ballet know, Rodrigo, my hands. early work yeah. was gritty and, and very violent and very difficult and very, 
um, dark. Yeah, you don't want to go back to poverty, that's for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, you know, so I can just briefly share about that. You know, I, I had to tell you, it. poverty is shit. I, um, oh. I, I don't, I think that there's a limitation when, you know, the art, art is a suicide pot, which is, is, is a, it's a very powerful place to, to, to get suicidal in, but I don't think that's where I wanted to go. And so I really- Yeah, but I, 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 I take that. issue with that too, eh? because I mean, it's saying that if it's a dichotomy implies that the other option is to be the uh, Basel, Ching 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 kind of uh, artist, which I think it's- uh, No, uh, that's not, that's a very oversimplified, the other dichotomy okay, no, that's right. that you might find, you know, you find something tender or more something. It's not just the violence and thrashing around and beating yourself into or beating others or I don't know what, but somewhere it's on a receptive level. And I think it's much more difficult to, to be, um, actually really as an artist to be really gentle with yourself gets difficult it's not as easy as it looks oh. it really isn't yeah. i get sometimes so touched by a single brush stroke and it sounds stupid when you say it but i find it quite sounds painful stupid. it sounds you know just the, <laughs> the fact they were hanging on an edge everything is hanging on an edge and in that realization brings a great empathy that then the ugly stuff becomes ugly very ugly so um, like a sort of a painter like Agnes Martin or something. I mean, I think she's quite aware of ugly stuff somehow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gabriela. I have a question, uh, Angela. I listen to you and it seems like painting is for you the origin somehow or the base of everything. How do you, could you see yourself today as a painter artist or you need to do performances and videos because somehow the painting seems to have all that you're talking about is already there. Yeah. The, I think it's a great uh, question. It's a great question around asking. And it's a question I ask myself as well. Why do I, why do I enlarge? And I think it's just a bit like um, stepping into another framework in order to re-see what I'm doing in painting and vice versa. It's a dialogue. It's, and, um, and because I, I guess my whole life has been strung very much on dual threads, I, I have this naturally to this common goal or the this and that. Um, and this, through these differences, I get a, a sharpen my, my, my sense of what I'm doing. So, for example, if I've done a giant painting, then I love to go and do something really tiny. And then if I do a series of tiny things, then I need to do something big. And if I do something that's very dark, then I do something light. So it's always in these uh, slalom of differences. And um, the f I think that my work has gotten so much in my, so I, in the end, I spend a lot of time just sitting, waiting to know when to make the brush stroke. So a lot's happening inside my mind. I, I've worked my way in oil paint that I cannot correct anything because it makes the surface, there's stuff in the surface that I don't want. So I have to, I think it's what and what interests me is not that it looks clean. It's just that you cannot cover up life. Actually, that's what interests me. You once something is lived, you cannot unlive it. So I've worked myself away into painting where I cannot unpaint something. Um, and then, there's little, there's, sorry, there's, there's and so I think somewhere. Um, it's um, the physicality of performance is something where I can sort of get, you know, get my flesh in there a moment whilst I, um, for a moment, it's, it's, and I, uh, in the meantime, I, I think that there are many, like we have different organs in the body, um, you know, but it's about trying to create a cohesion. And I must say the dialogue between um, working with the dancers and we, this performance was inside the space with the people, right close to the paintings and the dances. You, the, you, know, you could smell it on. It was extremely. It is kitsch. Huh? To me, it's kitsch. The dancers are kitsch. Too much. Far too much. Uh, and Marta. Yeah. And uh, um, my yeah. question was also the same than Gabriela, I was wondering why you enter into performance or installation, because when I see the videos, I saw other videos in YouTube about your work, I, I can 
I can I just see your painting. You're totally. a great painter. Totally. And I think you connect people without saying anything. Exactly. Just painting. That's our first Because, conversation. Our first conversation is Angela, um, shut up. Angela, shut up. Angela, shut up. Just paint. Yeah, I mean, there's a, but you know, you, you, you also. But you did shut up. Just. It was a And you also say that you are not a political uh, artist, but I think uh, the way you cut your landscape and put together separate, it's a political decision. Totally. And the, the way you show the beauty, the silence, it's, a, it's an atmosphere more than the, the beauty. So I am still asking why the dancer, why all the thing you put around your paintings, because it confused me. Uh, it's more, it's like Gabriela's question, why you Excellent. need uh, another support? Uh, to, because your painting, it's all, I, I think, I mean, it's great. I think it's, it's everything because there. Um, I, I don't know, my, my person cannot read one line as one thing. I am, I, um, you know, I've been painting all my life. I've had three children. Um, I'm a sociable. I'm a loner. I, I run on on many strings. In and so these paintings, somewhere, I'm gathering also momentum for these paintings. And so I gather them in these other experiences. Also, for example, one of the first great, you know, I mean, I've got a lot of painting lessons out of being with my kids, like the immediacy of a movement, folding laundry or cleaning stuff up, you know, this kind of language of gathering and moving. I think the first, the first movements I understood that I was looking for to create a surface, I realized that the movements I was using to empty the laundry were very really true. And I thought, why am I not doing this on the canvas? And so I, it's my way to read behaviors is sometimes not on the canvas, but in other places. And then I, because I'm open, you know, when you're in front of a canvas, then you start to have all these things like, you know, it's these filters, what does it look like? Does it work, does it not work? Do you, is, is it beautiful, is it not beautiful? And, and I, I find that um, gathering experiences, um, like what I've got out of performance is really good for my painting. I feel like I, I have to, take a stand in some ways that was a new ex experience that when I come back and take my brush, I have another, another piece of vocabulary, how I'm using my brush because of the experience um, as a performer. So I don't owe it to anybody to not perform. If I need to perform three hours or three months to do a good painting, then great. <laughs> But I'm just going to do it. You know, it's like, Um, a cow has to three stomachs to digest I, at the moment, I think because my painting has got so essential as well. And um, yeah. I don't, I cannot just fiddle around and start going Ooh, like this, you know, while trying to say bit. that, can I say that it's kind of like your, your painting, I think is at, at, at the highest. No, is it your, your, yeah. who, who owns the monkey? I do. Okay, you know that that you're giving it to me. No. Yes, no, <laughs> Angela, stop it. I gave you the two ideas that, that, that the two of your career. I deserve in public. I'm, I'm asking you. I, because it's, have you seen the monkey? It's like it's it's like an icon. It's like a religious icon. It's like Christopher and Pantocrator. There have been three That's monkeys. Monkey. No, but the one that is almost like transparent. It's like they're all at... transparent. They're all. Uh, well, I mean, you know, you know, you know what I mean. So I had an idea. I had an idea for portraiture that if you'd be a monkey, what kind of monkey would you be? And I would try to paint you. Yeah. I, I, I'm telling you right now, a baboon. You'd have teeth. A baboon. <laughs> a, a, the ass. I want the ass in colors. And I think I have bottom. it. I think I have it. A pink <laughs> bottom. <laughs> Um, I, Santiago, that I had committed to you. <laughs> Santiago, Sorry. from from the east, what what do you have to tell us? From the peace of the of oh. the Paris. 
I was thinking of Switzerland and how it has this uh, cultural uh, fluid uh, culture uh, fluidity, right? Um, between the three different countries and how it yes. mixes them all. Um, and that um, uh, the monkey that you say it's an, like an icon, I was thinking of the another painting that is like a triptych and the center is void and it has trees on both sides. That is the big a... one. That is the big one. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And um, it's such a Western uh, subject, but in an Eastern uh, approach. Um, but however, when you describe yourself, and maybe this is just today in this conversation, but it sounds like you identify a lot like a half Chinese artist i wonder what it is what it means to be a half a half british artist living in switzerland what a, what a good question uh, what nationality are you i'm argentinian you're argentinian yeah, yeah but that's it was a wrong question which means half everything <laughs> as well yes it was almost perfect uh, so uh, yeah, so it's a great question here because it's 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 all, it's all over, but it, but you never refer to it really as a topic. Your Britishness. Yeah. Um, so if you read my book, uh, there's a uh, there's one page about the cupboard where our dishes were kept, and there's a there's a part about all of these very exotic Chinese. Um, things like dragons and cups and stuff and in between is a little English cup that was my mother's cup uh, so my mother's um, dishes amidst all the Chinese paraphernalia they had um, not so much space and <laughs> my dad so the the, um, the world of my you know the, this Asian the presence of this Asian world in my British village where I was born was very specific. It was a mixture between being attractive and difficult at the same time, because there were no other Asian people where I was born. There were no other non-white people where I was born. My dad was the only non-white person in my childhood place. And um, when I went to school, I was quite teased that time, uh, Ching Chang Chong. And um, it was um so i mean the the yeah in those days um and neither nor and so when i went to asia the first time looking for my chinese family they all i was 17 and my chinese family looked at me like i've just some kind of alien arrived from another planet so um but so that's why in my art rodrigo you know you asked me how do i respond to art critics look basically i i don't i do my thing I do my thing. And I mean, I listen, I'm interested to listen and I'm interested in people's response because I'm interested in communicating. But essentially when I walk out to do my work, I do what I do, I have to do. And I find my it, it might be linked to what you just said. Uh, I think that Santiago nailed it, with the, nailed it with the question, just move the tone, just change the tone. Um, because um, being being educated in Britain as a different color, um, it, it's harsh. It's harsh. It's a, it, it, I think it marks a person. Um, it marks a person with, you, you, you call it teasing, but I'm sure it's bullying. And, um, and, the, and your, your, your Swiss experience can be seen from a different perspective from there. You know, so it, this brings a whole different way of addressing it, not as much as covering the um with the sentimentalism and with evangelical and like, by the uh, way Kuruhaha, the, the 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 blood but as a, as a as a neutral place as a place of um, arrival you know like but, you know switzerland like i mean i've lived in three different continents you live in switzerland just the journey from the german part to the italian part is so different yeah, people, it's so different. So Switzerland's a very complex country, full of differences. Actually, although it's a little tiny place, um, 
the and there are many cliches about it but i mean like the people here in the in the southern part the latin people here is very different than in the northern part completely different yeah. crazy for, for god's sake yeah <laughs> lugano how do you say milan pronounce milan i love it milan milan <laughs> um I'm, I'm feeling that I'm, I'm leaving someone out of the thing where we have 10 more minutes. Um, if you want to use it, do it now. Because one thing that we haven't addressed was your installation, your mega installation, which is one of your, because we're talking about, we're talking with her. So I, I, I have an with answer. Sisyphus, with Sisyphus, we're talking. You like know the, they leave the palace and you have to paint the whole palace. Um, well, that was me. I took it on. They wanted to give me six rooms and I asked for 25 because I'm greedy. And um, I'm, I, I just, I got so taken in by this amazing space and I wanted to just create a whole journey. I want to create the whole world in there. But I have to say... Um, um, I see yeah. wonderful. Uh, you know what what it, what it's doing is seeing painting in different contexts. It's also opening people up beyond sort of certain categorical. I mean, you guys maybe are more differentiated than your artists or whatever, but somewhere seeing the paintings inside a space that is um, connected with installative aspects was. Um, for me, it was like how I live in my paintings in my studio. So I enjoyed that. And um, I, so for example, in one room, I created a, a bed and I made an iron frame and I made the whole, and then I got, it's like, it's, it's a bit infantile. Um, it was like creating a whole living place. It's like creating a world. And I, I get so energetic and I have so many ideas and it feels, um, I feel that, um, uh, it's a way of creating um, a kind of immersion where painting comes out on top, um, funnily enough. I mean, the paintings, they, they anyway, my paintings all connect to each other, but then there's other things in the room, objects, and then the objects connect to the paintings. And, and there's you in the room. I mean, there's you in the room as Alice in Wonderland. A little bit. A, it's going a, a little bit in that plane. direction with life because i mean i'm uh, one of the things that i wanted to, to talk about is this for the artists eh? um angela puts a lot of effort actually the one thing that i have today i was telling her that i have from angela and comes with me everywhere i'm sure they show it i mean should i show it hold on i have it, I have it here okay so it's, it's like a it's like a charm and it's a head uh -huh. so here actually here um, it's heavy, it's bronze, and um, it's one of the one of my precious, most precious things. This, um, and it's um, and it it's you take a lot of effort in the gifts in the not not this was part of like uh, your marketing. But it's not marketing. It's something else. You, 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 you take it to an art level. So I wonder whether this performative, I would separate performance from per, the performative Angela. This performative Angela, it's this like kid, like inviting all of us to a party. And there's something, there's something even childish about it, but charming. And um, when it's presented like that, when it's presented like that, um, and there's great painting. So what can go wrong? Talk about us, this, what, because this is one, but you do it all the time. You do this like book that it shouldn't be that complicated, but you make it like the Lindis Farmy Gospel. Yeah, that in the show in Milan, they did 25 rooms and they did a book. I, I was unstoppable. I had so much energy. and But it has to do with gifting. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, um, I but think. But it's a gift of no return. It's not the economy of the gift. Because you give a gift. No, it's not it's, economy. Yeah, it's not, but it's not, a, no, the economy of the gift, I mean, that it doesn't, usually the gift 
is you give something and something will be given back, but you give them. You know what I mean? It's like these gifts are not gifts, are almost like memorabilia. It's almost like you've been with Angela. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's memory. This is memory. So you asked me about my, you asked me one of the collections. I'd like to just address that you mentioned when you sent me what you wanted to talk about. You mentioned to me that I call my collectors supporters. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I think that, so funnily enough, as much of myself as I put in it, in the end, the paintings are quite detached from myself then at some point. Mm -hmm. And um, they're quite quiet. So mostly the people then can start a relationship with that image, like you have a relationship with that little head. I mean, he doesn't want anything from you. He's fine if you don't look at him or if you do, it's also great. But you don't know that. Huh? You don't know that. Well, I mean, people who buy the work or collect the work. Um, my my <laughs> secondary market is not good because people don't get rid of the work. So they live it with, other, you know, they, it stays there for a long time. Love it. Mm. Aww. And it's heavy. It feels, it heavy. feels good, yeah. It feels the heaviness. It's heavy. Yeah. You know, I would. I made. Um, I I made. A, I'll share with you quickly. Yeah. An image. Please do. Do um, I do something? I just tried to share my screen now, and I'm going to show you. Um, the bronze doll. The bronze? And I don't know. I'm going to show you the bronze doll if I can find it. Wait. Bronze door. Like Rodin. No, my bronze doll. Doll, Here. doll. I'm going to show you this. Can you Alice see it? Wonderland. <laughs> can you see this? No. You have to share content, eh? No, oh, wait. Hang on. I want to show you this. Share screen. You have disabled screen sharing. You have to let. Okay, I have to let you. How? How do I do that? Security. You have to enable screen sharing. Enable original sound. Meet meeting settings. Okay, hold on. Um, always show meeting controls. Two separate because so time. Speaking in camera. Me parece que eso vos, Rodrigo, que tenés que habilitar. ¿Y cómo lo hago? I don't know, pero acá dice. El anfitrión inhabilitó la función de compartir las pantallas. Yo creo que es compartir pantalla. Tenés que vos habilitar. Ah, ok. Entonces comparto okay. pantalla, eh, pero no, me da opciones muy limitadas. ¿eh? Eh, creo que es en participantes, que le tengo que pasar. ¿No? ¿Alguien sabe? Pues eso sí, no. sí por, en participantes que tenés que apoyarlo como anfitrión. Okay. Y, te, y, y después Entonces, te apoyaste en la, en la ventana de ella, que hay tres puntos, y creo que ahí... En la ventana... Ah, ya no veo nada. ¿eh? Eh, entonces, put in waiting room, allow to record local friend, rename, make host, my host. I think now you should be able to. Yes, Madre. I can now. Hey! Ah, charming. <laughs> Rosemary. This was um, a sculpture I did for uh, its bronze. It's a doll and the arms and legs move. But it's a sort of alien child doll. And that was part of my new exhibition. That was. This, this has something to do with your relationship with motherhood. Is a reflection on, on that because when you describe your going back to painting, um, there's something of like finding refuge from motherhood. Finding what? Refuge, refuge from motherhood. Because the fact that being a mother is great is, is shit. The fact that what? Being a mother is great. I mean, well, sometimes, but basically it's shit. You're like giving all your to these three or four or whatever um, people that are going to marry other women 
that they're going to be young and they're going to go away and you're going to see them go and you put so much effort. What the fuck is that? It's like being an artist. It's like doing art as well. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But with art, at least you put your name. So, uh, okay, I mean, it just we're going closing towards the end. Um, this, is a, this is a work that was very important for me right now. Um, it's wow. uh, this density of, of these needles that keeps going. Small painting. Yeah. And... Um, I guess so. You asked me what's to do with the child. The child, I think, is has to do with uh, the 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 state of where we're in and sort of certain, you know, what what's going to be still how are humans going to manage to go on. So when you go when you talk like that, Black I, I, Mountain. Do, do you do you mean it? Like when you talk about humans, I mean, what do you know? Humans. Well, no, I think I think the I, what I think what's happening, you know, what I see, what it says is deep kind of concern. What's going to be for or for my kids in this or for kids as such, the next uh, fifty years. It's we'll see where what happens, but um, it's I think it's very fragile um, time. Right, right, but I mean, but motherhood for you is not a, is not an issue in your in your painting. Because I think it is. Oh, it is. It is. Yeah. I mean, it's it has a lot. Of, so my my um, the act of like giving energy definitely connects to my. Um, uh, Look at uh, that. This is uh, two meters high by about four meters. One of the questions that I asked you was, uh, what differentiates this from wallpaper? Yeah, I know you asked me that. The Gournay, the Gournay wallpaper. Um, I think because uh, you know the marks, the marks on the painting like this. If you look, this is, this is. There's an energy in these marks that you don't have. It's different than in in the. Yeah. There's an edge, mm -hmm. a tension in these movements and this composition. So I mean, of course, there's. You can say, okay, you see plants on wallpapers, but no, no. I don't see plants on wallpaper. No, no, it's, it's, it's uh, I agree with the, with the answer. It's, it's energy. It's, a, and it's energy and it's, um, it's a reflection on silence. I mean, silence is the most important thing. You know, it's what makes art. And in your work is the topic. Um, that's why it, it cripples me that you put those two, the, the, those two people, the, dan the tango dancers there in front of the thing. Well, but, you've just seen a small part and... Uh, no, well, that's but the thing is, your paintings have... Are thema they thematize something that is thematized all along history. Beautiful to see. Ah. I mean, I got totally uh, just the whole idea of these of these. So what went? Let me explain you what was interesting for me. I was interested in three components that that are each in themselves individual artifacts that hold up. So the choreography in itself is complete. The paintings in themselves are complete and the music in itself is complete, but they affect each other. So what is it for the dancer when he dances so close to a painting that might affect their, their dancing? And what is it? So when I did all of these works in preparation for the choreography, in dialogue with the choreographic process. So we were over six months in communication about based on the narrative. And the narrative was like the reference point. So you asked me something about what's the importance of words. Um, words are like a kind of um, a lighthouse or they're a reference points to find file a vision. Um, but for me, for example, this this work here, when the the dancers uh, open were, it, open it, it's open. But when the dancers were like 10 centimeters, their feet were inside the sky. It was interesting to experience that somebody, because I, you don't see things isolated. A painting is always, there's a room around it. There's a door next no, to but it. You know that this was done by Yvonne Reiner and Rauschenberg, right? Oh, they've been doing uh, like the Black Mountain uh, group in the College. 50s. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or like That's people it. dancing to totems. This is ancient. People dancing to artifacts. So why so why were we going back to that? I think it's interesting just in terms of, I guess it's about because, the, you know, the, giving us some sort of 
dialogue with the painting physically because there's you know we're just going into a gallery and have a drink and hum ha and walk past it it's just i think the idea of like standing in front of you don't think that you don't think dancing that. you don't I, think that the, that the spectator does that you don't think that you think no, that the but I, mean, the climate, I just think it's interesting to dance like i dance a lot when i'm painting and just think it's drawing out physical responses and um, you know, it's 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 beautiful to respond with your body to something and not just stand still, or like no. to think. And I'm I'm just interested. I was just curious to see how, what happens. And at one point, when the dancers were moving, it looked like the paintings were moving. It suddenly put things into another kind of motion. I'm, but for me, the paintings have to live on their own as paintings. But it was one, one layer of experience to see them in context with this with this choreography, and I thought it was interesting. And uh, the dialogue with the with show the me the nineteen. Huh? Open the the Al works nineteen. The what? Third row, in the middle. The Al works nineteen. Um, I love that painting. That one, that one, I love it. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at the, the, the it's almost like um, the host. You know, it's, it's like, it's like, it's like Eucharist. It's part of this. Yeah. And it's the monkey, show us two than the monkey. It's called Lifelines, it's called Lifelines, these two. Nice. Do you have the monkey to show them, my monkey? I... Um, I do. Studio Mess Marco, mm, Pietro. <laughs> <laughs> Vito. <laughs> you want to see oh, early work? I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is, yeah, this is Clemente, Francesco Clemente. Early work. Guardia. Motherhood. Look at that, Macho, Romulo Macho. 1986. Wow. Rocket. Yeah. The colors, no? How the colors change? This is very Gaston, very Philip Gaston. Yeah, Philip Gaston was my hero. Mm. Oh, a lot of blood, a lot of um, no? dark. Yeah. No, yeah. clearly you are you are in a happy time. How about this? That's a self-portrait. As punk as as Nina Hagen. No, no, no. This is this is like um, my paint. My paintbrushes were my my way to fend, deal with life. Like masking yourself. No, I think I felt that my painting spirit was quite was very dark in those days. You're wearing a mask too. In the blue. I, I can't find a monkey right now. Sorry about oh, that. What? Oh, here. Here's monkey. No. No, there's a, this, that bird. This is who, new. Who made it? Oh, that's, that's very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Very Chinese, that one. Probably your most Chinese one. The the way the... the this is amazing. What's the name of the of the that German? This is Angela. When I'm painting, that's how I'm watching what's going on. <laughs> I mean, it's, it has like the proportions of a human, like the anthropomorphic proportions. How many heads is that? That's like the, the, the look. That's me. That's me. Like Friday night. <laughs> it's in New York right now. This painting. So you're loaded. Because when you, when you were with me, you were poor. You, you, that was your, your hippie times. Yeah. This yeah, is an interesting painting. Now it's all How Celine. You... No, this I don't like. It's like, it's like this is an Argentine from the memory. But, it, but it's, a... it's like the new one. It's, it's like the new one. Show the new one. The, la the, 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 the new one you show. At the beginning. Yeah. This is it's the same connected. Maybe this is a little bit early. It was like often you have a, a painting that's early, that's coming early, and uh, they're, they're a little bit odd. Angela, don't you didn't you happen to you that because your work is also very repetitive? 
so that you want to kill someone. Kill that, someone? Well, if you have to do another one of your those setters, I kill someone. Because it's like you, 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 you've been lo a long time, like setters, setters, setters. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I never get sick of it. It's so interesting. Okay, cool. These are all cedars. This looks very, it's very different. Apparently. Yeah, very different. Very different. They're more like um, the, 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 who's the log? The log, you say? The, what's the name? Yeah. No, the, 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 the phallus. Um, you know, I never get sick of, uh, I, I think it's very interesting to, to repeat. And the I'm very interested in too. repetition. And I also yes. think it's because so much is changing all the time. You cannot go to buy the same yogurt because the lid is always changing. I like the this. I can eat the same. I can eat the same food every day for. <laughs> can you open survival, please? Survival. Survivor. Yeah. Survivor. Uh, second row left. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. The part from the right is the so is so Chinese. That's I think this is the, the, the Chinese sir. Um, Cedar. But you know, I have a whole idea about this paint and how these paintings. So you, it's again, you asked me about the text. I usually write um, a text, and then the, out of this, I find the paintings. So the writing is quite important for me. I know. Yeah. 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 Oh, really nice. Really nice. How, how, how big is that, this painting? Um, uh, 140 by two meters. Wow. This is lovely. It's lovely. It's like hovering on you on the- It's an on animal. The, on the living room, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like, it's, it's kind of like trying to run away. It's running away from- But I've something. seen this, you know, I've seen this tree. Have you talked to you him? Know, one of your guys in the blog, I often think of him. I can't remember his name. And Sam. he wrote one on the blog. I think she thinks she's a cedar. What? <laughs> he Who? wrote what some guy on the blog years ago, he said, I think she thinks she's a cedar tree about me. And I think he's really right. <laughs> I, I think uh, he's right. Well, Angela. Guys, um, um, I'm sorry, it's got a come little. Come back, come back to the to the because they cannot come back. You can come back press, to the press on the, your on your image. I come back in. Yes. Here, wait. I'll stop sharing. I yes, madam. Yes, madam. Um, well, so I, I mean, Angela, thanks so much for the for the roasting. Um, it's uh, it's great to be, be able to talk like this about art with an artist without hanging up the artist because it happens to me Angela and, uh, you, they you hang up on you you won't believe it yes they hang up on me I mean <laughs> <laughs> well because I mean we live in post-dictatorial Argentina nothing so um, we're going to talk about that probably next week with Nestor um, Munoz the mythical curator in Chile um, of the Museum of Fine Arts when the transition from Pinochet to the post-dictatorship. Um, so that's going to be like an experience if, if I manage, although he's um, a little bit idiosyncratic, you know. <laughs> um, so but tell me, I have a quick question to you guys. What are you doing in this group exactly? And then I have a question to you. Just to, you know, what do you just just quickly tell me? What are you doing in this group? Why do you do what, this group? What you are not so doing. He gives classes and he gives different classes, different nights. Uh, I've been taking classes with him like for, I think, about 10 years. I don't know. Wow. Quite a long time. And so is it I, for you? It's a what I always say, What I always say is every, in each class, there's always something that he makes me doubt of what I thought I knew. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Not good. There's That's always something, very good. something that, that puts a question. And, and I find that, especially living in Asuncion, Paraguay, which is a country that doesn't have so much options in art, for me, it's like having some oxygen every once in a yeah. while. Great. 
We're going to so teach a, a, a course together. Gabriela, I'm telling the rest. And we're going to teach a, a course on the... It's, it started as the art of the chronicle, because in, in, in the Southern Cone, it's about telling... It's, it, it, the chronicle is the, is the gender, from, gender from below. You know, um, of the of the resistance of the of the of the conquered. It started like that, but I think we're going towards a history of art of of modern art of the southern Kong, of like Paraguay, Chile, and Argentina, like in in com compared and in with the theory. So with the local theories and the and the native theory. Um, so yeah. So the rest. What are you doing here? Answer me, Elizabeth um, Verdugo. Okay. No, Marta, 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 please. Well, uh, we also do connections, but mm, that we do not expect. Uh, I think it's like an, I don't know the translation of being in a acontecimiento, every class. In a, <laughs> um, when you, you know, when do, two cars crash, something new, an energy, uh, That's the come event. Out of that. So I think this is the classes that Rodrigo gave us and the possibility to crash in each class to a different thing in art. And that opened us uh, new connections. If you want to learn I, about performativity. I think that's also me. one of the reasons why I mix media, you know, with different um, uh, disciplines of other kinds of artists, it's an opportunity to also to cr to bump into things that you wouldn't. Yeah, that's think. great. I mean, it's great. I mean, otherwise, you know, you you don't want to just start to, to, to get stuck. And you? Elizabeth. Uh, <clears throat> tengo problemas con internet, pero bueno. Voy a hablar en español y vos lo traducís. I, I translate, yeah. <coughs> La pregunta de ella era... Vos lo traducís, por favor. Vamos nosotros acá. Que, que patrona de estancia, vos lo traducís. Sí. Por Entonces, favor. Entonces, eh, que para mí... Eh, por favor. Tus clases... No, no, son no translating. Con... No translating until I hear, por favor. Te voy a traducir. Dale, de, 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 decir la oración. Por favor. ¿Que lo hablo en inglés? No, hablo yo. Ah, vos, me, vos querés que traduzca. No, yo lo no por favor. Vos estás en patrona de descanso. Es sí. Vos traducís, vos traducís, que hacete la boca vos, que te pago el sueldo. Perdón, perdón. Perdón, no. porque encima que te escucho mal. Yo soy una estrella. <coughs> eh, lo que quería decir es que... What you wanted to say was that. Me interesa eh, participar de estas clases porque... Being these classes. Oh, eh, me siento activa en el arte. She feels eh, cuando estoy en estas clases. En estas in clases. Art. When she comes, she, she finds vitality, artistic vitality in these classes. Porque siento que, que todo you. el tiempo estoy haciendo arte, pero no tengo el fundamento y acá es donde yo me encuentro y realmente puedo pensar, hago arte o no hago arte. That's really nice. Gracias, Elisa. That's, that's, that's great. That's great feedback. Sí, también también it, los aportes de, de, estos, de estos encuentros y de mis compañeros son importantes para mí, como, como ir, seguir con tantas preguntas, ¿no? Y creo que eso me hace sentir bien en el arte. Siempre estoy llena de preguntas. She says that she's always doing art, but doesn't have a chance to question herself what is art. So the classes give her the chance to question herself and to post new questions. Uh -huh. Gracias, Elizabeth. Es, es, un, es el mejor, eh, es el mejor compliment, es el mejor feedback. Because it, 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 in a way, it was not what my project was. But because it, it, there's something in art that it's dead, and it's uh, either this or that, and there was no. So the, it, it, it's a community, it's, but it, but it's not a community community. It's kind of like a place where you come and go, and you. I mean, it's not, you know, it's like, it's not, I, I would love it to be a cult, a sexual cult, but um, I'm getting fatter and I'm not getting younger, you know? So um, I don't think it's going to happen. If it didn't happen 10 years ago, then <laughs> but I'm very, I'm, I'm very honored by the level of my students. So that's why I wanted you to see them. 
no, to, to meet them. Because, I mean, you don't see them individually, but each one of them, they have a, a dense career. They, have, they know what they're doing. So my question to you was, because I, in a way, my, my criticism at the beginning were about certain lightness in the, in, in the touching. The, the, in, and the art world, in a way, um, the, 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 the commercial art world, in a way, endorses that to immunize us from true empathy, not post-empathy, true empathy. So, I mean, what, 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 Alexis, okay. I mean, yeah. to put your life, to put your life in, in a, on the, on the, on the, you know, at the, at the front uh, of the risk, you know, and, and live through death, not to be a, a walking bed. So, um, and so my question is like, what, what, being the conceptual artist that you want to be, since you're resisting um, <laughs> your painterly um, genius. So, um, did you, do you read? Do you study? What? How do you get to build the uh, the, 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 the 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 that? Do you, uh, do you know about this? Uh, have, are you? Do you know the other artists that are working with that? Um, because it's um, it, what we do here is like really we go in depth on the, 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 the issues, you know, because it's today art is not that much about form, although it is, but it's a lot about um, the, your position, your, uh, your, 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 your perspective. And there were the couple of things that were said here that I would take seriously, very seriously. Like for example, the criticism on your view on, I think Marta said it, on the landscape, the way you frame the landscape, it's already in your positioning, in your situatedness, it's already a political stance. And it's a political stance very tricky when you are going to come back with another thing that it says the opposite. So how, do, 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 did you have this in, in your world or... Or you just discard it, or you you study, you how do you get there? Well, when you use the word political, you have to say political about what? I mean, for me, it's very clear these fragments are uh, they're like part of a larger picture. But where does that larger picture? So for me, landscape painting is always a fragment of a bigger world. And uh, well, no. like paintings for me, this is how no, I frame I'm happy, the landscape. I'm happy for you. But a, a, a landscape as is the gender genre that is highly ideological. It's like what do you, how do you represent the land? Who owns it? Who, how do you want to convey the humans in that land? Are there humans in yours or not? Are there? Um, is is I, there something disturbing? In my landscape, yes, the control. human. The human becomes the viewer, so there's always a doorway no, for no, the no, viewer. No, 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 no. Now, inside the painting. I mean, I'm not trying, but don't bring me the viewer. The inside the painting. So the viewer is always there. I mean, so the painting doesn't show human beings. The painting doesn't show economy. The painting doesn't show, um, doesn't show, for example, a classical stance. It's unbalanced. So it's it's unsafe, but it's safe at the same time. It's, it has planes, it's, it's planimetry, it's, it has two planes, it doesn't have more than that. Um, it's, it tends to be black or white, it's like, it, but it's foggy. Um, so all those decisions, aesthetic decisions, have an ethical counterpart, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, whatever, whatever you say. And, uh, and the moment you produce a painting, the painting belongs to the viewer, and the viewer can do and can get the, the, the conclusions that he could. But you could have two attitudes to that. Ignore it, because every, everybody has his own opinion because you're liberal and someone are rich and are poor, so die poor. Or you can have a truly empathic approach to it. So th this is my question. And my, and my question, the empathic approach comes with knowledge. I mean, you can fight power and you can fight ignorance with knowledge. Pedagogy. This is what I do. I mean, I wouldn't be doing this. So, um, of course, I mean, I love Marta's um, question because there's nothing more political than the landscape. And in a way, your landscapes are like concealing more than revealing. 
And uh, so if you come with another prop that pushes us in a place that you're just minimizing or banalizing something, like migrants, it's, uh, you know what I mean? It's you put yourself in it. I know who you are, Angela. I'm not saying that. I'm not questioning you as a person. I'm talking about the, 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 the visual objects. So it's, it's kind of, you, you put yourself in a, in a risky position or an unnecessary person. And that's my humble opinion. You know what time it is for me? It's 20 past two in the morning. I got to kiss. <laughs> I've been up since five. So what does it mean? What does it mean that? A fuck off, can you say? No, but I, I realize now I, I got like up. It's like your paintings. You boom. It's like it's Sorry, like. A I'm just tired now. I, I've been for you here for two hours. That's it. Angela, <laughs> thanks so much for the generosity. Um, a big round of applause for Angela. No, don't be too too loud, please. To you, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. Good okay. luck, everybody. Be well. And, and answer the, the phone for me. To me. Thank tomorrow. you, Angela. Goodbye. Thank you, nice Thank you very much, Angela. All bye the very bye. best. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you.